Good morning. Today is Tuesday, Transcript Tuesday, January 9th, 2024, and I will be the moderator for this class. You have been muted. Please continue to monitor your mute and video buttons during class. Thank you. Welcome to the Zoom class given by some students of the Institute of Divine Metaphysical Research. We are a Zoom class of international, honest-hearted truth-seekers of Yahshua the Messiah. This is a school and not a church, and neither are we affiliated with any religious organization. This school is a nonprofit, non-denominational, religious, and scientific research organization dedicated to showing proof of the existence of Yahweh, our Elohim, and the operation of his eternal purpose, pattern, and plan operating throughout eternity to this present day. This school was established as the result of a divine vision and revelation given unto our founder, Dr. Henry Clifford Kinley, in the state of Ohio in the year 1931. The school was incorporated in the state of California in the year 1958. Classes are held in Canada, United States, Jamaica, England, and Zambia, and students studying in the Bahamas, Ghana, Malaysia, Australia, and certain other foreign countries. Our facilitator for today is Dr. Dennis Pratt. In this school, we teach the true, correct, and original name and title of the Father, the Word or Son, and the Holy Spirit, which are contained in the original Hebrew text. The true name of the Heavenly Father is Yahweh. Yahweh has been improperly substituted with the title Lord. The true title of the word of son is Elohim. Elohim has been improperly substituted with the title God. The name of the Holy Spirit manifested in or out of a physical body is Yahshua. Yahshua has been erroneously substituted with Jesus Christ. Lord and God are titles and not names. The Apostle Paul, filled with the Holy Spirit, tells us in 1 Corinthians 8 and 5 that there are Lord's many and God's many. But we now know that each Lord must have a name and each God must have a name also. Elohim is a title, but unlike Lord and God, Elohim is a divine title. That means that Elohim is the title that our creator chose for himself. Jesus is a name, but it is an erroneous name. A minor investigation on your part in any good dictionary or encyclopedia would prove that neither the Hebrew language, the Greek language, nor the Latin language have any characters or letters in their alphabet that would produce the sound that is made by this letter J. Neither was there a letter J in the English language until some 1400 years after the Messiah's death. Therefore, making such names as Jesus and Jehovah impossible renderings of the true an original name of our Heavenly Father and of His Son. Christ is a title, just like Lord and God. Yahweh is pure spirit, and in His pure spirit state, He is inscrutable and incomprehensible and indiscernible. He is the ultimate source, substance, limits, and bounds of everything. We have Yahweh in his pure spirit state, symbolized on this Moses chart as a cloud. 
Yahweh is not a cloud. He merely chose a cloud to symbolize himself because a cloud has no particular or descriptive shape or form. We have drawn this cloud all around the edges of this chart to show you that everything on the chart is within the cloud. In like manner, everything in the universe abides within the pure spirit state of Yahweh. Yahweh knowing that man could not perceive of him in his pure spirit state, took on shape and took on form right within himself as Elohim. This is the word or son, a super incorporeal being, that is, having the shape and form of a man, but without flesh and blood. This form may only be seen in divine visions and understood by divine revelation. Later on, this self-same spirit manifested himself in a physical body and walked the earth plane as Yahshua the Messiah, whom the world calls Jesus Christ. Now there is only one name given unto salvation, and we all must know that name. So the simple yet intelligent question that we should ask ourselves is, what was the name of our Savior during the time of the earth plane? A further understanding of this name, Joshua, and title, Elohim, may be obtained by the preface of the Holy Name Bible. Also in this school, we teach by the divine pattern of the universe. It is called the divine pattern because it is Yahweh's pattern. After Yahweh led the children of Israel out of Egypt, he called Moses atop Mount Sinai and showed him the tabernacle pattern in a vision. Yahweh instructed Moses to build one exactly like it in the wilderness of Sinai. The pattern consists of a most holy place, holy place, and a court round about. These three compartments make up the one tabernacle pattern. In this school, we show proof to how everything in the universe is made and operates according to the structure and function of this divine threefold tabernacle pattern and that absolutely nothing escapes the pattern. In this school, we teach the mission of Yahshua the Messiah, which was to, fill the, to fulfill the old covenant and to write the new covenant in our heart and mind by the preaching of the gospel. The primary aims and objectives of the Bible class are as follows. First, to help you find and know Yahweh our Elohim as he really is and actually exists. Second, to form a nucleus of universal brotherhood of humanity in Yahshua the Messiah without the distinction of race or nationality creed, sex, caste, or color. Third, to investigate the unexplained spirit law or so-called law of nature and the powers latent in man. Fourth, to encourage and promote the study of the scriptures, comparative religions, psychology, philosophy, and modern practical and occult science. Fifth, to extirpate current superstition, skepticism, and ignorance. Six, to learn, know, and understand the operation of Yahweh's eternal purpose through the dispensations and ages. Seven, to discern and avoid being deceived by Lucifer, the serpent, the devil, the dragon, or Satan and his demons operating the mystery of iniquity on earth through the dispensations of time. Eight, to earnestly contend 
for the common salvation and faith, which was once delivered unto the sons or children of Yahweh. Ninth, to make known that Yahweh, from the beginning ordained, there is no other name given among men whereby man can be saved, saving the name of Yahshua the Messiah. And tenth is to inherit eternal life now in the kingdom of Yahshua the Messiah with the hope of immortal glorification in the new earth state. Our watchword is peace and our slogan is speak the truth. We will begin this morning's session with a prayer by Dr. Lenore Allen. We will have a song by Dr. Jacqueline McCain. And our scripture lesson will be Hebrews, the 10th chapter. And that'll be read by um, may I ask Dr. Valerie Lewis, if she's available to read the scripture lesson today. Yes, and I our, Thank you. And our readers for this week will be Dr. Jackie McCain and Dr. Ben, Deborah Van Hook. May we have our prayer, please. Good morning, class. Let us bow our hearts and minds and thank our Heavenly Father for gathering us together once more, whether you're listening to this or you're listening to a recording, that we be gathered together in our husband and savior and father and king, Yahshua through Yahweh, Yahweh through Yahshua, and that we would be made ever aware of his ever presence that would guide us and fill us with hope and knowledge that we have something wonderful to look forward to forward to and not to despair in the name of yasha the messiah our husband let us all say hallelujah 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 Good morning, brethren. <clears throat> I want to sing how great Yahweh is today. <clears throat> oh, Yamael, when I in awesome wonder consider all the world thy hands have made. I see the stars, I hear the rolling thunder, thou power throughout the universe display. <coughs> In the sings my soul, my savior, Yahshua, how great thou art how great thou art then sings my soul my savior Yahshua. how great thou art how great thou when through the woods and forest glades I wander and hear the birds sing sweetly in the trees. When I look down from a lofty mountain grande and hear the brook and feel the gentle breeze. And when I think that Yah, his son not sparing, sent him to die, I scarce can take it in. That 
on the cross, my burdens gladly bearing, he bled and died to take away our sins. When Yahshua shall come with a shout of acclamation and take us home, what joy shall fill our heart. Then I shall bow in humble adoration and there proclaim my Yah, how great thou art. Then sings my soul, my Savior, Yahshua. How great thou art. How great thou art. Then sings my soul, my Savior, Yahshua. You are how great thou art, how great thou art. Hallelujah. Praise Joshua. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Beautiful. The scripture reading for today's class is. Hebrews, the 10th chapter. And I'll be reading that out of the Holy Name Bible, containing the Holy Name version of the Old and New Testament. And it was critically compared with ancient authorities and various manuscripts. And it was revised by the late A.B. Trainer of the Scripture Research Association. Hebrews, the 10th chapter. For the law, having a shadow of good things to come and not the very image of the things can never with those sacrifices, which they offered year by year continually make the comers thereunto perfect. For then would they have not ceased to be offered because that the worshipers once purged should have no more consciousness of sin. But in those sacrifices, there is a remembrance again made of sins every year. For it is not possible that the blood of bulls and goats should take away sins. Wherefore, when he cometh into the world, he saith, Sacrifice and offering thou didst not desire. Mine ears hast thou pierced. Burnt offerings and sin offerings hast thou not required. Then said I, Lo, I come in the volume of the book. It is written of me, I delight to do thy will, O Yahweh. Above, when he said, sacrifice and offerings and burnt offerings, even for sin thou wouldest not, neither had pleasures there, pleasure therein, which are offered by the law. Then said he, lo, I come to do thy will, O Yahweh. He taketh away the first, that he may establish the second. By the which will, we are sanctified through the offering of the body of Yahshua the Messiah once for all. And every priest standeth daily ministering, offering oftentimes the same sacrifices, which can never take away sins. But this man, after he had offered one sacrifice for the sins forever, sat down at the right hand of Yahweh, from henceforth expecting till his enemies be made his footstool. For by one offering he has perfected forever them that are sanctified. Thereof the Holy Spirit also is a witness to us, for after that he had, has said before, this is the covenant that I will make with them after those days, saith Yahweh. I will put my laws into their hearts, and in their minds will I write them, and their sins and iniquity will I remember no more. Now where remission of their, now where remission of these are, this, these is, there is no more offering for sin. Having therefore, brethren, liberty to enter into the holiest place by the blood of Yahshua, by a new and living way, which he has consecrated for us through the veil, that is to say, his flesh. 
and having a high priest over the house of Yahweh, let us draw near with a true heart and full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled from the evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. Let us hold fast the profession of our faith without wavering, for he is faithful that promised. And let us consider one another to provoke unto love and to good works, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as the manner of some is, but exhorting one another, and so much the more as we see the day approaching. For if we sin willfully after that we have received the knowledge of the truth, there remaineth no more sacrifice for sins, but a search, certain fearful looking for, for of judgment and fiery indignation, which shall devour the adversaries. He that despised Moses' law died without mercy under two or three witnesses. Of how much sore punishment suppose ye shall he be thought worthy who has trodden underfoot the son of Yahweh and has counted the blood of the covenant wherewith he was sanctified an unholy thing and has done despite into the, unto the spirit of grace. For we know him that has said, vengeance is mine, and I will re recompense, saith Yahweh, and again Yahweh shall judge his people. It is a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living Elohim. But call to remembrance the former days, in which after ye were illuminated, ye endured a great conflict a great flight of afflictions partly whilst you were made a gazing stock both by reproaches and afflictions and partly while you ye became companions of them that were so used for ye had sympathy with them who were in bonds and took joyfully the spoils of your goods knowing in yourself that ye have in heaven a better and an enduring substance cast not away therefore your confidence which has great re recompense of reward for you have need of patience that after ye have done the will of Yahweh ye might receive the promise for yet a little while and he that shall come will come and will not tarry now the just shall live by faith but if any man draw back my soul shall have no pleasure in him but we are not of them who draw back unto perdition, but of them that believe to the saving of the soul. That was Hebrews, the 10th chapter. Hallelujah. 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 We would like to thank everyone for their participation. I will now turn this class over to our facilitator for today, Dr. Dennis Pratt. Dr. Pratt. Good day, everyone. Um, in spite of how in some places there may be rain and other places flooding, um, someone could get tired as three and five. We know spiritually that Yahshua is our waters of regeneration. He is the Holy Spirit in us, renewing our heart and mind unto himself. And so we welcome the rain. We welcome the day he's given us to learn of him and assemble and to grow with an understanding and have our faith steadfast. So Titus 3 and 5, if you can read that, please. Titus 3 and 5, not by works of righteousness, which we have done, but according to his mercy, he saved us by the washing of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Spirit. Thank you. So we're here today uh, again by his grace and mercy to uh, give someone an opportunity for the next 30 minutes to lay a foundation that we were taught when, when our founder was in the flesh to keep in mind the first time and return visitors that may be present today or may be viewing this broadcast at a later date. So with that said, I'd like to invite Sister Camilla Perry an opportunity for the next 30 minutes, if she could, lay a foundation on the, on the principles that has been given to you.
Okay, is she not available? I saw her in the chat. I see a message. Okay, you're muted, Camilla, so I don't know if you're able to speak or not, but I see you're here. Okay, let's yield the floor to Dr. Valerie Lewis from Springfield, Ohio, please, and laying a foundation for the first time returning visitors for the next 30 minutes. Then we'll get into the second reading of this transcript, which I posted in the chat. Dr. Lewis. Yes, good morning. I'm happy and glad to be with you all on a special day. And um, I'd like to just start off by saying what we're gathered here together is to come to more profound knowledge of an understanding of Yahweh's purpose, pattern, and plan of salvation. And this is uh, what, we've, what we're engaged in down here is a direct result of a divine vision of revelation given to our founder, Dr. Henry Clifford Kinley here in the state of Ohio in 1931. And uh, when I first heard that, I was kind of, you know, cautious about it because I never didn't really understand vision and revelation or knew anybody that had one necessarily. But as I came, kept returning to the, uh, these classes, it was shown to me how that Yahweh has always worked with mankind through divine vision and revelation. So that was something I was... Uh, ignorant of my religious upbringing did not teach me any of this so what we do is we're um, try to listen with an open heart and open mind because some of the things you might hear are contrary to some of the things that or all of the things you hear here are contrary to what the world is teaching so uh, this is a result of a divine vision and revelation and Yahweh has always used a vision to communicate and revelation to communicate with mankind and um, we can go down through the scriptures, and that's what we do is we use the Bible. We use the creation, because Yahweh created the creation to show forth himself. And those are the witnesses that Yahweh has given mankind so that he, they can come to a profound knowledge and understanding. And why is it important to know your creator? Over in John, let's go to John 17 and 3 to start with. And then I want to go to Isaiah 8 and 20. These are things that we've all learned since coming down here. And I want to go to Romans 1, 19 and 20 also. John 17 and 3. And this is life eternal, that they might know thee, the only true Elohim, and Yahshua the Messiah, whom thou hast sent. Okay, so if you ask somebody on the street, do you want eternal life? Most people would say, yeah, but they don't even know what it is. And coming down here, we learn through the scriptures, which are written under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. And we have scriptures for that also. And the reason we get scriptures is to show you it's not of a man's mind. This is something directly from the creator himself. Um, the scriptures are directly from the creator and the vision and revelation that man had at the end of this age here, Dr. Henry Clifford Kinley. He said he had a vision and revelation directly from the creator. And he didn't, he didn't say, just believe me, I've been sent. He said, you make me prove it to your satisfaction. And that's what we come, keep coming back for, because we want to understand more about it. And like, this is life eternal, that you might know Yahweh, the only true Elohim, and Yahshua, the Messiah, whom thou hast sent. So a life eternal, this is not how you get it. This is what it is. It's a knowledge and understanding of Yahweh, which is the name of the Heavenly Father. And Lord God, our titles, we don't use that. He gave his name back at the time of Moses. And um, so we're going to just show you how, why we use the true name of the Heavenly Father, why we uh, understand more about Yahshua's mission, understand a tabernacle pattern we get looking at the creation so all these things we've learned since coming down here now yahweh is the name of the heavenly father and that's in the original uh script and that's uh, hebrew characters the little pointers pointing to those hebrew characters and that's called the tetragrammaton and you can look that up in a common dictionary 
it means, you know, tetra means four and grammaton means letters. So those are the four letters or characters of Yahweh's name. At first they wrote with consonants only, Y-H-W-H, or in Hebrew it's yud Hey vah Hey. And then for us to pronounce it, we had to, uh, we had to the, add the vowels. And the Yah portion or the masculine portion, you have, there's two A's in Adam's name. He was the first man, Adam. And way is the feminine portion. And you see that there's two E's in Eve, the first e woman. So Yahweh is both masculine and feminine right within himself. And that's how he procreates. He doesn't need the external. And the thing is, it's like people say, oh, well, you don't know how to pronounce it. Well, he put that breath of life in every living soul. And you listen to the way everybody breathes. It doesn't matter if you speak Chinese or German or whatever. We all breathe the same way. And over in Psalms 119 and 6, it talks about let everything that has breath praise Yahweh. And how does that happen? You listen to the way you breathe. Yahweh. 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 And I was told that my first class, and then I went home and listened. But they said, go lay on your, when you're going to bed at night, just listen to the way you breathe. And that's the breath of life. And it's really the uh, rhythm of the universe. You listen to the waves, they come in, yeah. And they go out, way, yeah, way. So the name was never really lost. And, you know, there's many witnesses in the creation also. So we use the true name when Yahweh gave his name back at the time of Moses. I'm just going to briefly say it. It's in Exodus, the third chapter, and you can go back and read that. He That was the first time he gave his name to Moses because he was sending Moses to do a job. And he said, uh, when he gave his name, he said, I'm the Elohim or the, the of your forefathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. I'm the one you know, but you only knew him by El Shaddai, which means almighty provider. But you never knew, they never knew his name until he revealed it to Moses. And when he gave his name, my name is Yahweh, he says, um, this, this is, is my, my name. name forever. And mm -hmm. this is my memorial unto all generations. Mm -hmm. So his name, that's his name forever and a memorial unto all generations. And there's like over 6,000 quotes about the name and the importance of the name and just the Old Testament alone. And they've taken that name out and put in uh, Lord. And, you know, they've taken Elohim out, which is a pluralistic title, and put in God. And then the, the name of the Holy Spirit is Yahshua. Okay. So we use these true names and there's, you know, I mean, we could spend hours just tell, telling you about how important the name is. And um, so I want to... I want to just uh, say that he, when he gave his name, he said, this is my name forever and a memorial unto all generations. We're part of forever. We're part of generations. The name of Yahshua, uh, he said he came in his father's name and you received him not. Let another come in his own name. Him you will receive. That's in John 5 and 43. And then he saw it, he comes in his father's name. He bears the masculine part, the Yah, masculine part of the father's name. And like all of us come in our father's name, you know, and then the Shua means salvation or liberation because he came to save his people from their sins. So the thing is, he came in his father's name and he came and his mission was to save souls. And that was in the scripture readings tonight or today, tonight. And uh, so the name of the savior is also very important. Go to Acts 4 and 12. Well, just to give you a little background on this, this is we're talking dealing with the name of Yahshua, which is the name of the Savior. It could not have possibly been Jesus. There was no letter J in the English alphabet until some 400 years ago. That's uh, quite a bit of time after the Messiah walked the earth plane. So when they named that, that child, and that's in Matthew 121. It says, she shall bring forth a son and thou shall call his name Yahshua. They couldn't even utter the name Jesus. There was no letter J. No J, no Jesus, no Jehovah. Okay. 
and there's still no letter J in the Hebrew alphabet, okay? So the thing is, that's an impossibility, and that's something man has added. But we're talking about a divine vision of revelation. So we're going to use what Yahweh deems important rather than what man thinks is important. So it could not have possibly been Jesus. So every time Jesus is in the book, it was originally Yahshua. Man took Yahshua out, put Jesus in. And the, that's why we read from the Holy Name Bible, like we read the scripture reading today from the Holy Name Bible. And this was put together by uh, A.B. Train of the Scripture Research Association. It's not affiliated with our um, organization. But he went back and uh, put in what was originally in the, trans, or the original text of the, of the scriptures. And he uh, put the name Yahweh in there, took out Lord, put Elohim back in there. So, and then Yahshua, the Messiah. So Acts 4 and 12, yeah, the disciples, this is after Yahshua's death, burial, resurrection, and outpouring of the Holy Spirit. So we're jumping ahead. And they received the gift of the Holy Spirit on the day of Pentecost. That's in Acts the second chapter. And then they went out preaching and teaching in the name of Yahshua. And in Acts, the third chapter, they healed a man in the name of Yahshua, who was lame from birth. And he was begging at the, uh, the temple, you know, where people were going into the temple. And you can read all of this, Acts 4. Th we, we encourage you to, you know, we're just picking points out. So, but we go back and read above it and below it, and pick up the whole t idea behind these scriptures that we're kind of pinpointing. So they were, this man was lame from birth and he was healed in the name of Yahshua. And so Peter and John, who received the gift of the Holy Spirit on the day of Pentecost, they said, we don't have any silver and gold that, as you're asking for, but in the name of Yahshua, rise up and walk. And the man was immediately healed in the name of Yahshua. There's power in the name. So they, and then what happened is they were put in jail prison because of that instead of celebrating a, a, somebody healed in the name of Yahshua they the religious leaders at that time were mad about it read Acts 4 and 1 please and as they spake unto the people the priest and the captain of the temple and the Sadducees came upon them, being, that's it, being grieved that they taught the people and preached through Yahshua the resurrection from the dead. Now listen to that. These religious they, leaders, hold on, please. Uh, being grieved that they mm -hmm. taught the people and preached through Yahshua the resurrection from the dead. And that's when they came, you know, they healed the man in the name of Yahshua. And these religious leaders at the time were grieved that they taught the people and preached through Yahshua the resurrection from the dead. Because some of those religious leaders, the Sadducees in, in uh, particular, that they, uh, they didn't believe in a resurrection from the dead. They didn't believe in spirit. They didn't believe in angels. So the thing is, they were teaching and they showed the power to resurrect a man who was lame from birth in the name of Yahshua the Messiah. So they put him in jail. And then as they took him out of jail, um, they set him in the midst. That's in, pick it up and go down to seven. And I'm just trying to highlight this because it's important for us to know the name of the Savior, the one that died for the sins of the people, the one that is the only one that is able to save our souls. And the soul is what's going to go on out through eternity. The flesh only has a limited time here. And our, our purpose here is to learn and understand something about our creator to, you know, like uh, to serve, honor, obey, and glorify Yahweh, Elham, and Yahshua. And that's what we come together for. And we want to proclaim that name. So here they are being, after uh, they were put in the midst, they were, after they were put in jail overnight, then they were set in the midst. Okay. Read. Verse seven. And when they had set them in the midst, they, they asked, by what power? Or by what name have you done this? So they're they're then trying Peter, to under, they're understanding what they're doing. They're trying to understand what they did, and these are the religious leaders. If you read above it and you know below, like I said, okay. Then what did Peter say? Then Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, said unto them, 
ye rulers and pe excuse me, ye rulers of the people and elders of Israel. Now listen, if we this listen, day be wait, wait, wait one minute. Then Peter it says, and then what's it say after that? Filled with the Holy Spirit. So it's really the Holy Spirit speaking. Said unto them, ye rulers of the people and elders of Israel, if we this day be examined. You're going to examine us of the good deed done to that impotent man by what means he's made whole. Ten, please go ahead. Be it known unto you all that, and to all the people of Israel that by the name of Yahshua the Messiah of Nazareth, whom ye crucified, now, whom who Yahweh crucified. raised from the dead. I'm sorry to interrupt you. But it's the one that you crucified. He's actually making it very clear exactly who he's talking about and who this man was, by what means this man was made whole. In the name of Yahshua the Messiah, the one you crucified, whom Yahweh raised from the dead, even by him does this man stand here before you whole. Peter's not taking credit for it. Okay, go ahead. This is the stone which was set at naught of you builders which has become the head of the corner. Neither is there salvation in any other. For there is none other name under heaven given among men, whereby we must be saved. Now, neither is there salvation in any other. And the, the whole idea or train of thought that we're talking about is by what power, by what name have you done this? Have they healed that impotent man? For there is none other name under heaven, given among men, whereby we must be saved. So if you want eternal life, or if you want the salvation of your soul, and that's what we're about down here, is the salvation of your soul, and which is going to live on eternally in one place or another, in one state or another. Uh, neither is there salvation in any other, for there's none other name under heaven given among men. This is the gift that was given to us, the name of salvation. And the power in that name to heal a sin sick soul. Neither is there salvation in any other. For there's none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. So it's a must. It's an absolute. And we, these are the things we're learning down here. We're finding out. And it's actually the whole family in heaven and earth is named by that name. So we want to know the family name. And that um, I just want to get a couple more scriptures about the name of Yahshua. Because there's power in this name. They healed somebody back then, and you can be healed, your soul can be healed now. And it's only through Yahshua the Messiah. So it's like uh, Ephesians 1 and uh, 14, or no, no, 1 and 21, and then 3 and 14. Ephesians 1 and 21. For above all principality and power and might and dominion, and every name that is named, not only in this world, but also in that which is to come. Okay, so this is far, this name that we're talking about, Yahshua, the Messiah. And again, like I said, read above and read below to get a clear understanding. Far above all principality and power and might and dominion in every, not just some. And when the letter J comes around, then we'll change it to Jesus. No. Names don't change, it, by uh, the and in every name that is named, not only in this age or this world, and that's another thing that we learn is about ages and dispensations, but also in that which is to come, because this creation is coming to an end, but there is going to be ages yet to come, and that we have a dispensation and ages chart, and that's something that we've learned a great deal about from coming down here, and. So there's we're, the, the name of Yahshua is important now and it's going to be important throughout eternity. He's the only way, the only truth, the only life. And no man comes unto the Father Yahweh, but through Yahshua the Messiah. Okay, so this is far above everything else. Now, uh, if, I think it's 314 of Ephesians. So we're just giving you a taste of what how important this name is. Mm -hmm. 3 and 14 of Ephesians. For this cause I bow my knees unto the Father of our Savior, Yahshua the Messiah, of whom the whole family 
in heaven and earth is named. So the whole that family in heaven and earth is named by the name of Yahshua. Mm -hmm. So if you want to be part of the heavenly family or in the um, the family here we are from earth, but at the whole family in heaven and earth, you know, and it's so it's like it, it's all named by the same name, you know. He but then that's why we bow our knees unto the Father of our Savior Yahshua the Messiah. He's the one that died for your sins. According to the scriptures, we can prove that out. We can show you the death, burial, and resurrection, or the uh, what Yahshua went through, but wit as witnessed in the physical creation also. So all these things, we want to try to show you how important it is. And um, that's about the name. And there's so many other scriptures about it. But the importance of the name Yahweh which means he who is, exists, and causes to exist, and the importance of the name Yahshua, which is Yahweh's salvation. So it's like this is the, the only name whereby we must be saved. Mm -hmm. So we uh, deal with the name Yahweh, and we use that throughout all of our lectures, and, um, and we know why. And the thing is, it's like we don't want to use those titles and erroneous names because it's, Yahweh's not pleased with it. Okay, he wants us to know, I mean, one of the big Ten Commandments, and most people are familiar with the Ten Commandments, there was a lot more other ordinances um, and laws back there. But the one of the big Ten is, thou shalt not take the name of Yahweh, thy Elohim, in vain. For Yahweh will not hold him guiltless that takes his name in vain. And in vain, vain in Hebrew means to falsify or substitute. And when you're taking the name of Yahweh, the title Elohim and the name Yahshua out of the scriptures and falsifying or substituting them with Lord God, Jehovah, Jesus Christ, that is breaking one of the big 10 commandments. Yahweh doesn't play when it comes to his name. And you know, just right within your own self, that if somebody takes your name out of context or calls you something different out of your name, you don't appreciate it. And you correct them usually straight away. And, you know, I sometimes when you travel, it's like my name is Valerie, whether I, I'm visiting somebody here in the United States or I'm traveling some, to some other places. On my passport, it says Valerie Lewis. So the thing is, names don't change. You know, we, we had peace missions go out and they were preaching and teaching the things that they learned down here to all different uh, religious leaders and uh, political leaders. Three ecclesiastical peace message, peace missions. And when they came, they had interpreters sometimes in different places that they were at. But when it came to the name Yahweh, they all said Yahweh. Just like I said, we all breathe Yahweh. So that's an important factor. And that's what, why, why we use it. And we all also been taught about, if you just go through the charts, it's like we've been taught about a tabernacle pattern that was given some 3,500 years ago, back at the time of Moses. This is called the Moses chart. And Elohim is really the archetype original pattern of the universe. So we see that when Moses received, he received the name at the burning bush that we just talked about because he had a mission. He had to go down into Egypt, flee or um, free the children of Israel out of the bondage that they were in in Egypt brought him through the divided waters of the Red Sea and came into Mount Sin came to Mount Sinai or the wilderness of Sinai to, to uh, worship Yahweh. And the thing is, Moses was invited up all the way to the top of the mount. He received the name and a vision. He's also, this is Moses pictured here on the top of the mount where he saw a panoramic vision. See right next to Moses laying there, panoramic vision of Elohim to Moses, okay? And then you had the Eloistic form. That's what Moses saw in his vision. Then that you see this tabernacle pattern. And this tabernacle pattern is an explanation of Yahweh Elohim. Then you see it like a half uh, Yahweh Elohim. And you see the creation. It says creation by the pattern. By the what? The tabernacle pattern. Okay, so the creation came in. And this is all being shown to Moses in his vision. And you see the days of creation, they're all threefold by this threefold tabernacle pattern, which is an explanation of Yahweh Elohim. And it showed, if you go through all the days of creation, it's going by that same tabernacle pattern. 
And so Moses was shown this in the vision that he received, one of the visions he received. He went up there three principal trips. We can deal with that too, you know. And then he also, he saw that for seven days. And, you know, and just to point out, like, how do you know that Moses saw a vision? It's like, how did Moses, how was Moses able to write? Because the Genesis, which is, you know, oh, there's so much in, but Genesis was written, authored by Moses. Moses is attributed to writing Genesis. Moses wasn't even born to the second chapter of Acts. I mean, Exodus, sorry, the second book. So how was he able to write the book of Genesis? You know, since nobody was around, no man was created on the first day, the second day, the third day, the fourth day. He didn't, man wasn't created until the sixth day, according to Moses' vision. And then, so how did they know what happened prior to the man coming in? There was nobody there to write it down. So we're sh saying that Moses, Moses was shown in a vision and revelation what happened on the, in the days of creation. And it was all going according to the divine tabernacle pattern. And that took seven days. And then he was up there 40 days. So the rest of the time he was being shown the tabernacle pattern. So there must be something pretty important about that tabernacle pattern. He's shown the days of creation, seven days. And 33 days in, in the vision, he was shown the, this uh, tabernacle pattern. It has exterior in the beginning of before the creation comes in, and then it has interior. So there's certain things about this tabernacle pattern which are important for us to know. It's a pattern of all things. And if we can show how it goes by your, phys your physical body goes by this tabernacle pattern, everything goes by this tabernacle pattern. And this, is the, this, this chart here is man made in the image of Elohim by the pattern of the tabernacle. This is something that was given to Moses, like I said, 3,500 years ago. And it's showing how that's a tabernacle pattern, this first picture here. In the middle, it's a tabernacle of man. So it's showing man. And we're all basically made the same way. We're all made in Yahweh's uh, Elohim's image and likeness. And that's in Genesis. And then, then man by the pattern, it's broken down the different parts of your physical body. And it, it's like, we can show you, I'll just show you a brief idea. You have a, in the tabernacle pattern, you have a most holy place, the top portion there. You have a holy place, and then you have a court roundabout. There's three compartments, but it's one tabernacle pattern. Now the tabernacle of man, you have a head cavity, you have a chest cavity, and you have an abdominal cavity. You have arms and legs, like it shows there in the middle. And, uh, but people can live without their limbs, their arms and legs, but you, the core being is the most holy place or the head cavity, the chest cavity and the abdominal cavity. And then if you move over to man by the pattern is showing your head cavity is the most holy place. So it's putting it on the tabernacle pattern. Then you have the holy place and it shows your lungs and your aortic arch and your heart. And then in the court roundabout, you have your intestines and your kidneys and so on and so forth. So these different vessels correlate to a tabernacle pattern that was given 3,500 years ago. And man, for the most part, didn't know much about the physical body until relatively, relatively recently. Okay. So if I'll just show you an example. Um, I only, I know I only have a little bit of time, but um if you hit, you go into through the gate there in the uh, tabernacle pattern, you come to a brazen altar of sin sacrifice. And this is where they had to offer up their sacrifices daily in the tabernacle pattern. They had to wash them in the laver, which is the next vessel behind there, and then put them on the altar and um, offer them up for their sins or for peace offering for different things. But they, they had to offer up sin. It had a grading system. It has three, four horns on the corners. They had to take the blood and put it on the horns and then sprinkle the rest of the blood around there. And that sacrifice had to be burnt on that altar. Now, if you go over to your physical body in your court roundabout, you see this square configuration, which is your large and your 
large intestines, then your small intestines are scriggled up inside there. So what happened in the tabernacle, they had to offer up a sacrifice. And that's what's going on in your intestines or your digestive system. You have to offer up a sacrifice every day of your life. And the thing is, they offered it up. Something had to die so that they could live. Because sometimes if you sinned, it was a, it was either you or you offer up a sacrifice to make an atonement for the sin. Now, what you're doing is everything that you eat, you has got to die so that you can live. And you have this is a daily sacrifice. You eat, uh, you eat food constantly. Goes in your mouth, and goes down into your digestive system. It's sacrificed on that altar your altar so that you can live and all the nutrients are extracted and go around. There's a, the intestines are square in configuration, just like the altar. You have an ascending, transverse, descending, and sigmoid colon. And then you have those small intestines inside, just like they had a grading system. And that's where your sacrifice, daily sacrifice goes in. Now, the labor is the next vessel that corresponds to your kidneys. They had to wash the sacrifice there. What does the kidneys do? It washes your blood. So there's a cleansing in the uh, tabernacle pattern. There's a cleansing in your tabernacle or your your physical body. And um, then over after that, you have a horn or a vessel of holy anointing oil, which the priest, when he was anointed to minister properly in this tabernacle, because if he didn't do it properly, he would be dead. So the thing is, it's like, you have to do certain things properly in your tabernacle and that uh, over cupped over your kidneys there you can see the adrenal glands which are called the fight or flight hormone or they have to contain the fight or fight hormone so it's like you know when you uh, if you were being chased by a dog or uh, some kid ran out in front of your car or something you react qu quickly you know and that's what you have to do is re you react properly. And so they had, they offered up, and it's a type of the spirit or a quickening. So the priest could minister properly. So you can do the proper things, either fight with the situation you're in or flee from it. So it's a quickening. And so that you can act properly. And then, you know, we can go through the whole tabernacle pattern, but when you come up, it's like, I just want to show you that these things correlate. You know, you have a light lampstand with seven branches, one standing in the middle. When As you go through the door, there's a portal or there's a diaphragm because you have the veil between the court roundabout and the holy place, you know, blue, purple, and scarlet. And then you're separating your court roundabout in your physical body be between your court roundabout or your abdominal region and your chest is a diaphragm. And the veil back in the temple moved with the wind. And your diaphragm goes up and down or moves with your wind or your breath. So it's like in, in it has um, veins and arteries and capillaries. So you got the principle of blue, purple, and scarlet, just like you had in the tabernacle. You have a, a lamp stand there, um, seven branches, one stands alone. You have in your uh, chest area you have the great aortic arch and there's three paired and one uh that stands alone and that pumps blood throughout your whole body just like this can't lampstand was lit to give light to the tabernacle the this uh great aortic arch gives light to your tabernacle or your physical body and uh lights up you so the thing, and even the, 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 if you cut an artery, the inside of it is called lumen, which means light. Okay, so you got a principle of light in the tabernacle in the, in the holy place. You got a principle of the light or the blood being pumped throughout your body. So I'm just trying to show you, you got a table of showbread. There was 12 loaves of uh, bread on there where the pre priest got its sustenance. And that corresponds to your heart. You have four chambers of the heart. They had four corners and there was a crown around this tabernacle or this uh, altar. And there's a coronary artery system. Coronary comes from the word corona, which means crown. So you got a crown around your heart. And don't they, didn't you ever hear of tables of the heart? 
your heart doesn't look like a table, but it's corres corresponding to the table that is in the tabernacle. So you can see what even the things that were named in your physical body by men were inspired by a, by a greater power. And um, the average man like pumps uh, 12 pints of blood. Just like there's 12 loaves of bread, you got sus the priest got sustenance. You get your substance is being spread throughout your body by the blood. So you, you know, you just go back and forth with all these uh, correlations and it's just showing you how you're made in the image and likeness of your creator. You have an altar of incense here, the next vessel. And I'm going through this real briefly. And that corresponds with your lungs. There was four main ingredients in the air that was uh, or in the uh, incense there that was offered up on the altar of incense. And it was a sweet smelling savor unto Yahweh. And it was made after the art of the apothecary. So only the priest knew of the mixture of that. And that corresponds to your lungs. And it's uh, talking about your lungs is breathing in. And there's four main ingredients in the air that we breathe. And isn't a good breath of fresh air, sweet smelling savor to your body? It's sweet when you can breathe some fresh air. And um, uh, boy, there's so much. I'm just like, so, and, and, and anyways, I, uh, I just, okay. So four main ingredients, four main ingredients. And uh, you breathe, like I said, you, we had the um, name Yahweh. You breathe that name of Yahweh. <gasps> <sighs> and really it's called the bronchial tree and wasn't that the place or a bush which is in the holy place according to the tabernacle of the the, the pattern the most or for, uh, on the moses chart you had egypt would be in the court roundabout wilderness of sinai is the holy place and then canaan's land is the most holy place and Moses was given the name of Yahweh at the burning bush. And it's a bush that was burning, but it wasn't being consumed. And your lungs, the oxidation, you, it's, a, it's a burning in your lungs. And it's called the bronchial tree. It looks like an upside down tree. And that's the, where the breath of your breath of life comes from. You breathe in. <sighs> so there's four main ingredients in the air you breathe. There's four main ingredients in the incense. And the four letters of the Tetragrammaton, you're breathing the name of Yahweh. And that's your breath of life. And then there's another veil. You have blue and purple and scarlet again. And that corresponds to your neck region. You had the blue and the purple would be like the thyroid gland because there's not a whole lot of capillaries. So it's like the thyroid gland secretes uh, or stores iodine. And the, the uh, test for that is gives off a purple smoke. So you have blue principle of blue, purple, and scarlet there in your physical body that corresponds to the blue, purple, and scarlet veil but between the holy place and the most holy place. Then you go into your head region and you get a three-in-one configuration. You have the archangels and they're tied together by the mercy seat. And then there was an uh, Ark of the Covenant under there that had the Ten Commandment law, Moses, Aaron's rod that budded, I mean, and uh, pot of manna. But the thing is, this is a all in one in, in your brain or in your head cavity, you have the two hemispheres of your brain and they're gonna to correspond to the two archangels on the mercy seat. And you have, um, you have uh, Michael, which was a warrior and Gabriel, which was a messenger angel, tip shown forth there. And in your brain, the main functions are motory and sensory. Motory would be likened unto Michael the warrior Sensory would be like an under Gabriel, the messenger, sending and receiving messages. Those are the main functions of the brain. And the, they're tied together by the, the angels are tied together by the mercy seat. Under, um, in the, uh, above the roof of your mouth, you have a, a cella tersica, which is a, it called, it means a Turkish seat, saddle or seat. So you have a mercy seat. You have a, what do you have a saddle in your, you know, in your head region for? It's all going by this tabernacle pattern that was given some 3,500 years ago before they knew anything about the functions of your brain and the heart beating and so on and so forth. And then uh, under that, there's a scooped out receptacle or an arc there, and it had the Ten Commandment law. Underneath your, uh, in your, in your most holy place, 
you have what's called the there's a scooped out receptacle and it's a houses the pituitary gland which is the master gland of the body this is the ten commandments was the, the like the master gland of israel back here with the tabernacle pattern and you see that you have law there in your mouth on that uh, uh chart there anyway so the point is the pituitary gland it t tells you how tall you're going to be how fat how this or how that it governs your whole body just like the tabernacle or the ten commandments govern all of israel and this is where yahweh said he would dwell between the wings of the archangels and that high priest only went into the most holy place on the day of atonement and isn't your head cavity the most holy place of your physical body or your tabernacle so the thing is, it's like, this is where Yahweh said he would dwell between the wings of the archangels in the most holy place. And this is where we're going to find Yahweh now over there in, uh, let's go to X, or, um, 1 Corinthians uh, 6.19. And um, so it's going to show you, and this is what happened on the day of Pentecost. It's like they they received the gift of the Holy Spirit. This is where Yahweh said he's going to dwell between the wings of the archangel, and that's in the Leviticus 16 and 2, he's going to be, dwell in the most holy place and in the cloud in the most holy place. And that's what's going on is Yahweh. Uh, okay, get 1 Corinthians 16, I mean 6 and 19. <clears throat> First Corinthians 6 and 19. What? Know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit, which is in you, which you have of Yahweh, and ye are not your own. Okay, so for the, what don't you know that your temp, your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit, which is in you, which you have of Yahweh, and you're not your own? Why is that? Read uh, 20, please. For ye are bought with a price. Therefore glorify Yahweh in your body and in your spirit, which are Yahweh's. Okay, so you were bought with a price. So you, you worship Yahweh in your body and in your spirit, which are really his. You were bought with the price that Yahshua paid on the cross when he died <clears throat> on, on that cross. Died for soul salvation or died for your sins to save sinners. And that's what he came in and that's what his mission was. And that's what they received on the day of Pentecost. They saw in Acts, the first chapter, talks about how they, they saw Yahshua he went through a death, burial, resurrection. He fulfilled the old covenant, brought in a new covenant. He made spiritual appearances after he resurrected from the grave on the third day. And he uh, made spiritual appearances for some 40 days. Then he ascended uh, up on, you know, go to the uh, elementary chart, please. He ascended, and it talks about in Acts, the first chapter, about how he ascended on a cloud, Okay. See, over here uh, in the first uh, plate there, Yahshua's death, then he's buried in Joseph's new tomb. He resurrects a quickening spirit, not, not a physical body, a life-giving spirit, a quickening spirit. And then he tarried on earth and made spiritual appearances. This is all Acts first chapter. Then he ascended on a cloud, and they were witnessing to that, okay? And he said, Don't, why are you men's you know, looking at this, the same, he's going to return in like manner. And it looked like he went away on a cloud. And 10 days later was an outpouring of the Holy Spirit. When they received the Holy Spirit on the day of Pentecost, they came and he appeared in their cloud. And it talks about how they had cloven tongues like a, as a fire. They were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak. Okay, so they were all under the auspices now of the Holy Spirit. And that's where he can appear in your heart and in your mind. And over in the uh, scripture reading that we had today, it talked about uh, how the, at, right at the end, I'm just going to read a couple of verses. Uh, could, so we want, we, want, he want, we want him to make a spiritual appearance in your heart and in your mind or in your cloud. And a cloud is like gray and white matter. And that's what your brain is supposedly made up of, gray and white matter. So you see, there was a cloud in the tabernacle. There's a gray, gray and white matter in your most holy place. And that's where mm -hmm. Yahshua is going to appear. And it's all for the saving of a soul. And uh, just let, I'm just going to read uh, uh, 10 and 38. Now the just shall live by faith. 
But if any man draw back, my soul shall have no pleasure in him. But we are not of them who draw back under perdition or unto death, but of mm. them that, be, that believe to the saving of the soul. And the only yes. way their soul salvation is going to be accomplished is through Yahshua Messiah. He's the way, the truth, and the life. So our focus is on Yahshua Messiah and giving him all honor, glory, and praise. So you got a names involved. We got a tabernacle, and it's showing things. The whole um, Bible can be broken down by this tabernacle pattern. Everything in the creation can be. And I just tried to show a little bit about how the physical body is, because we all have a physical body, so we all can relate. So, and there's so much more. Yahshua came in to fulfill, not to institute. He's a unity, not a trinity. Trinity's not in the Bible. Institute's not in the Bible. So we can get into details about all this. And so you can know yourself for yourself and have that eternal life and be, your heart and mind can be quickened only through Yahshua and Messiah. So I hope that gives you a little bit of an idea. And um, we stand behind the aims of the school that we read all the time and the moderation. If you listen to the moderation, it describes the different parts, aspects of this teaching. So there's so much to learn and we're going to be learning in ages to come and it's, and it's going to be wonderful. So you can know something about your creator as he really is and actually exists. You can know something about your savior. And if somebody saves your soul, you want to make, give all praise and honor to him, glorify him always. All credit and all honor goes to Yahshua Messiah. Hallelujah. I'll turn it over. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Dr. Lewis. Valerie Lewis from Springfield, Ohio, for laying an excellent foundation for our first time returning visitors and for those who are in attendance who will have an opportunity in the future on Tuesdays to lay a foundation again um, in understanding better the name of our Heavenly Father, his divine tabernacle pattern, and how he instituted and fulfilled those carnal ordinances that the world to this day still choose to practice in seeking righteousness. Okay, at this time, we would like to begin the second reading, which I'm going to pull up here for us. And I believe we start here with Dr. Robert Harris. So the name of this transcript is The Last Lecture and Importance of Coming to School and Being Obedient. This was spoken by Dr. Henry Clifford Kenley in the, and it's transcribed and recorded in December 25th, 1975. Readers. Dr. Van Hook, you want me to start out? Yeah. Yes, because uh, you were reading from this, your transcript. Right. Do you want me to be Dr. Harris or Dr. Kenley? I'll be Dr. Harris and you be Dr. Kinley. You have the scripture. You have your your copy of the right. You're starting Are you with reading Dr. from your... yes. I'm reading from my transcript. Okay. Blasphemers. Mm -hmm. Blasphemers. See now, for you to get up and speak against this and think that it's my work, see, that's open blaspheming, see. You think you're hurting me. You ain't hurting me. I see that it's impossible for you to understand that the way I see it, unless Yahweh reveals it to you, you can't understand. Everybody sitting under the sound of my voice had the privilege this morning, if not this morning, you have in your lifetime of seeing the sunrise, seeing it reach its zenith in the sky, seeing it go down or set. Everybody in this building, everybody breathing, breathe, alive, see. You read the story about his disciples come and steal him away. He was the son of Yahweh, see. You never see. Now you know today, you know today by the sunrise, Yahweh put them things out there, the invisible things, put them invisible things out there for you to understand 
the invisible things. Put them visible things. Put them visible things out there for you to understand, not invisible. Okay. All right. Let me start. When you read the story about his disciples coming, still him away, he was the son of Yahweh. See, you never see. Now you know today. You know today by the sunrise, Yahweh put them things out there, the invisible things, put them visible things out there for you to understand the invisible things. Then when you read down, then when you read down there, his disciples came and stole him away. Was there a discrepancy? No, no. No. Okay. He was the son. S-O-N. You know, that's got to be a lie. Why? Because can't nobody come and steal the S-U-N away in the sky. That's out there. You follow what I mean? Even though you weren't back there, somebody would say, well, how do you know? Well, you understand, you understand how to put the thing together. That's the reason why it works like that. Somebody will say, oh, that ain't right. Say, the earth moves around the sun. Yes, it sure did. When he was in that tomb, it was an earthquake and it moved around the sun, S-O-N. Yes, sir. I tell you, see, this is something that you can't do nothing with. Now, let me say this, see, let me say this. Now, as it was said here, Dr. Harris also said it. Yahweh said to the law and to the testimony, if they speak according, not according to this word, it's because there's no light in them. Now, you ought to be wise enough, see, not to get up and speak against this, see, because you're telling on yourselves. Okay, you let's, see pause there. Let's, let's pause there because there's a lot that was just said <laughs> that I'm hoping someone can expound and either going over how the sun is a witness, the S-U-N is a witness of its ascent and descent of Yahshua's death, burial, and resurrection. Um, or we can look at the Law and the Prophets to see how he created the sun, moon, and stars as, as um, timekeepers. So I'd like to open the floor for anyone that would care to expound. Or I can call names. <laughs> uh, good, good afternoon, everyone. Praise Joshua, Messiah. Praise Joshua. That is a beautiful <laughs> witness <laughs> that you would wow. never see. But, uh, but yeah, just like he talked about with the, uh, see, that's what they did. Uh, you read that in Matthew about 12 and, no, 28 and about 12, that they paid the, the, uh, the um, soldiers money mm -hmm. to say that they stole his body away at night. And uh, I guess you can read it if you want. Well, read the 11 and come down. Matthew 28 and 11. Now, when they were going, now, when they were going, behold, some of, some of the watch came into the city and showed unto the chief priest all the things that were done. And they're when, saying they're saying that yeah, the stone rolled away and he resurrected. That's what they're telling them. Mm -hmm. And you have it on the chart there. Uh, those two men they were laid out when that angel rolled away the stone and they resurrected. But go ahead and read. It's moved off the screen. Well, you have the Bible. It's all right. Excuse uh, me. Verse thirteen. Twelve. 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 And when they were assembled with the elders and had taken counsel, they gave large money unto the soldiers, saying, Say ye, his disciples came by night and stole him away while we slept. 
Okay, so, and then, oh, and then it says, and if this come to the governor's ears, we will persuade him and secure you. So they took the money and did as they were taught. And this saying is commonly reported unto this day. So they paid those soldiers uh, uh, money to say that they stole the body away while they slept. And so the Holy Spirit through Dr. Kinley, and you ought to read it in Malachi 4 and 2, it's a prophecy in Malachi 300 years before Yash was born. It's telling that he's the son. Uh, they can read the charts or better probably. Uh, and as and as he said in the transcript there, uh, they say they stole his body away. And he said, well, have you seen anybody steal that son away in the sky? Because the S-U-N is testifying to the only begotten son of Yahweh. Nothing can live without the son physically. If you didn't have a physical Good son, point. there could be no life on this physical earth. That's, uh, it's testifying that there, nothing can live without the spirit. You can't have eternal life without the spiritual son, which is Yahshua the Messiah. And really, this son and how it's placed from the earth, uh, it was put in Moses' vision on the fourth day and prophetic time one day of Yahweh's is a thousand years and a thousand years is his one day well that's exactly when Yahshua Messiah appeared through the loins of the Virgin Mary was four thousand years from Adam which would be like on the fourth day now this son is is uh it's uh it's it, it's 93 million miles away from the sun I mean, that's how the earth is, 93 million miles away from the sun. Well, that's going by the pattern. You know, uh, the most holy place and holy place was covered over with coverings. They had uh, badger skins, ram skins dyed red, and goat's hair. Just like you have dermis, epidermis, and you have hair on your skin. See, that's the same thing with the pattern. And in the front there, what happened was it had a... Uh, well, the coverings were 66 feet long. So that means it, it, they went down the, and they were 45 uh, uh, wide. So it means the, uh, the boards were 15 foot tall. And then you go over top, the, over top 15, and then you go down 15. That's why you get 45 going all the way around it. Then in the back, you had uh, 15 foot tall. Then the most holy place, holy place is 45 long. So that's 60 feet. And so you, if you got six overhanging, so what happens is he folded the, he folded the uh, six foot down uh, in the front and folded the two sides in, which was uh, six feet on each side. And what that leaves you for the door is nine feet tall and three feet wide, right at the fourth step, which is showing the sun being 93 million miles away. And Yahshua's on the cross from nine to three. And don't the sun go down? <laughs> you understand? I mean, the sun went down when he was on the cross. And in, um, uh, and so what Dr. Kinley said, they said they stole his body away. Uh, the sun's too hot to handle. Plus, it's 93 million miles away. Can you steal that away? Well, if you can't steal the physical sun, you can't steal the spiritual sun. Did you get Malachi 4 and 2 there? Malachi 4 and 2. But unto you that revere my name shall the son of righteousness arise with healing in his wings, and ye shall go forth. And so that's a prophecy that they that revere my name, uh, the name of Yahweh, shall the son of righteousness, and it has S-U-N. Now, you know the sun up there in the sky. You can't call that righteous, but it's testifying to the real sun. It's telling you that the S-O-N is testi testifying to the S-O-N, the only begotten son, which is Yahshua Messiah. And it says to you that fear my name, uh, well, it says fear my name in the King James Version, but unto you that fear my name shall the Son of Righteous arise with healing in his wings. You see how he's going to resurrect? That's why, and, and healing in his wings. He's going to heal the souls of mankind. See, and he shall go forth and grow up as calves of the stall. So it, 
So, uh, so Yahshua, so it's te- prophesying of Yahshua Messiah to come. And, and you got in also Psalms 19, well, hmm. Psalms 19 and 1, you might as well read that. <laughs> because it's testifying that he's the son. And another thing Dr. Kinley showed in this, what, what we were reading there, was, uh, you know, somebody, well, I'll say this too. Uh, you ought to keep the charts. They can read. You understand? But uh, but anyway, it's okay. The The thing is, is that, uh, see, it was one time that the world, the Roman Catholic Church and the, and the world believed that the earth revolved around the sun. And then Galileo told, Galileo told them, no. Uh, the, the, I mean, they said that everything revolves around the earth. That's what they said. And then Galileo said, no, everything revolves around the sun. It's the earth revolving around the sun. And you know, he was kicked out of the church, Roman Catholic church for that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and you know what? If you look at it, you see how, if, when you think everything revolves around the earth, that's a carnal minded way of looking at it. And you know, that's how people's minds are. Everything revolves around them. You understand that's carnal mindedness. That you're just looking at things physical and just thinking about yourself. You don't care about, about nobody else. You know, you're you first, you understand? But then when he revealed that no, everything revolves around the sun, then you need to have the sun as the center focus, which is Yahshua the Messiah. You see that? And that's the same way it happens with us. See, when you come to this school, you're going to learn that it's about him and you're going to learn about him and, and what he can do for you. You understand? So why does the earth revolve around the sun? Well, he, he just showed you when he was on the cross, there was a great earthquake. Isn't Yahshua the sun? Mm-hmm. <laughs> and is it and the earth moving around the sun? That's fulfilling that the earth moves around the sun. <laughs> Would you ever see something like that? <laughs> then then and when he resur- and and when he saw and when they when that roman soldier saw that he said truly this was the son that was the son of yahweh when he had that earthquake it, it shook him up while he's on the cross plus he done seen the sun go down and turn dark from noon to three o'clock you know understand so even the the, the physical the spiritual son the only begotten sons on the cross and when he's on the cross it, the, the the sun goes down in reflection of the real sun going down for the sin of the world. And when the sun goes down every day and turns dark, it's testifying that Yahshua the Messiah, the son of Yahweh, went down for the sin of the world. And when he was on the cross, the sun went down and it turned dark. And then, and then and when the sun goes down, sometimes the sky turns red. Why is that? Because Yahshua the Messiah is on the cross and he's shedding his blood. <laughs> And, and that's that's what the, why the sky turns red, testifying that the Son Yahshua the Messiah died for the sin of the world and shed His blood, which is red. See, and then the Son's buried below the horizon every day to testify He was buried, and then the Son rises every day to testify Yahshua Messiah resurrected. And I think Doctor Kimley's going to talk about that later. He said everybody that he said everybody that had the opportunity. Uh, uh, sometime in their lifetime to see the sunrise. And why does it do that? It's testifying that Yahshua the Messiah resurrected early in the morning. He's got the physical son testifying to the spiritual son. See, and when he resurrected, there was a great earthquake. <laughs> Most people don't see that. So you see how he said has the, he's given those witnesses that the earth does move around the sun with those earthquakes because Yahshua the Messiah is the sun. And the earth, there was an earthquake, so that's the earth moving around the sun. <laughs> you would never see that, would you? You didn't go to church and hear no pastor tell you that, did you? Okay, you got Psalms 19 and 1? Psalms 19 and 1. The heavens declare the glory of El, and the firmament showeth his handiwork. So the heavens declare the glory of Yahweh. What's it? We call those the sun, moon, and stars. We call them heavenly bodies. So the son is, is, is representing the only begotten son, which is Yahshua the Messiah or Yahweh Elohim. And it was Yahweh Elohim 
the word or son that made the son showing how great he is and even when even when uh paul had his vision in acts the ninth chapter and when he recounts it in um, acts 26 he said he saw a light from heaven above the brightness of the sun but what would be above the brightness of the sun uh yahshua the messiah the only begotten son <laughs> Uh, and so when it says the heavens declare the glory of Yahweh, it's testifying that you have a son there that 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 everything revolves around. And it's the and, and that's the reason that there's physical life on the earth because of the physical son. But it's testifying there could be no life without the spiritual son creating everything and giving everything life, breath and all things. Uh, then you have the stars. Well, what are the stars representing? They're representing the heavenly host of angels you understand and when the sun resurrects do you see you don't see the stars do you because this because the stars are clothed in the sun showing forth the angels are clothed within the spiritual body of yahshua the messiah the heavenly body see they got the natural and, and the stars you can't count them showing that they're innumerable testifying to the angels and then you have a moon and the moon is representing the law uh and it's also well the moon represents the law and we also have a saturn planet sixth planet with rings around it testifying to uh satan <laughs> you know right within the word well saturn uh anyway uh and you had Saturnalia around Christmas time. All that's got Satan inside of it, just like Santa Claus. You get the same letters that make up Satan. <laughs> now, um, okay, so the heavens declare the glory of Yahweh. The firmament showeth his handiwork. Read on. Verse 2. Day unto day uttereth speech. Now, and day I unto not... day uttereth speech. Well, how does the day talk? The sun goes <laughs> down. That's a death. It's buried below the horizon. That's a burial. It rises every morning. That's a resurrection. It ascends to its zenith and it sets. Day and the day utter speech. And you have faith that that's going to happen because it's happened every day of your life. It's supposed to establish your faith. And like the first speaker said, what, ha what happens every day? You got to eat something. Day and the day utter speech. What's it showing? Well, whatever you eat, it sacrifices its life, testifying to Yahshua the Messiah, sacrificing his life for the for the sin of the world. So that's a death. Uh, then you, you something, I mean, you know, something has to die. Whatever you eat, it was living. It sacrificed its life. You you bury it in that hole in the ground, your mouth. <laughs> it's buried in there. And then what happens is the spirit takes those nutrients and processes it and burns it up, uh, like she was saying, on the altar. And then it resurrects uh, those nutrients to feed the cells in your body. And then it ascends throughout all your body to feed your, your cells with nourishment. So it's testifying of Yahshua the Messiah. He died. He was buried. He resurrected. And he ascended and poured out the Holy Spirit. Given, given mankind what their soul needs for salvation, which is the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit's got a name, uh, John 14, 26. But the Comforter, which is the Holy Spirit, and the Father ascended in my name, he'll teach you all things and bring all things back to your remembrance whatsoever I've said unto you. So the Holy Spirit's name is Yahshua. Okay, so now um, day in the day utter a speech. Well, what else happens during the day? Well, uh, well, you got a lot of things happen during the day. <laughs> uh, you can wash dishes and dishes are dirty. That's to find that uh, Yahshua took on the sin of the world upon himself. You bury it in the, the dishwater. That's fine. He was buried. And when it resurrects, you put it in the dish rack and it tarries there for a while. That's fine. He tarried on the airplane making spiritual appearances. Then it then that plate, you usually have it in a cupboard somewhere, and it goes back to where it come from. Well, that's what Joshua did. He came down the earth and, and took care of all those, uh, died, buried, resurrected, and ascended and went back, see? And, uh, yeah, and so when you go, to, you might have to go to work. Uh, when you go to work, that's likened unto a death, and you buried under the job. And then when you leave out, that's a resurrection. 
<laughs> it says it in US. Uh, and when you and if you put on your work clothes uh, and your clothes get all dirty, when you get home, you first thing you do is take them off and take a shower and put on some different clothes. What's that talking about? Yashua the Messiah put on his work clothes, came in a physical body, took the sin of the world upon that body and was buried. Then when he resurrected, he, he resurrected a spirit body, changed his clothes. See, all those things, that's day unto day, utter a speech. Okay, then it says night unto night showeth knowledge. But what happens during the nighttime? Most of the time you go to sleep. And when you go to sleep, that's the closest thing to death. And then you're buried in that sleep and then you wake up in the morning. It's testifying that there's life after death. It's testifying to the death, burial, resurrection of Yahshua. See, there was a lot of people that slept and Yahshua Messiah resurrected them. You know, that's what they call death in the Bible. When Lazarus was dead, he said he's sleeping. He said, I'm going to go wake him up. See, this is night unto night, show of knowledge. And you have faith that when you go to sleep at night, you're going to wake up because it's happened every night, <laughs> every day of your life. It's, it's showing you you should have faith in Yahshua Messiah's death, burial, resurrection, see? And then you uh, go and ascend and go out into the world. So that's going to death, burial, resurrection. And so, uh, so, so by eating all these things, uh, you're supposed to believe the gospel of Yahshua and Messiah. That's, what you're, that's how your soul eats, is by seeing these things repeated over and over again. Read on the third verse there. There is no speech nor language where their voice is not heard, yet their message is gone out through all the earth. See, and Yahweh's so got that working everywhere, all over the earth, and there's no speech a voice or speech where their voice is not heard everybody sees these things but it's not pointed out to them until they you know you have a vision a revelation the holy spirit pointed these things out to us and it goes on throughout all the and dr kinley called that speaking in tongues <laughs> the creation is preaching the gospel to us and we didn't know it read on and their story to the end of the world in them mm -hmm. hath he set a tabernacle for the sun. Now you see that in them hath he set a tabernacle for the sun. And look at the tabernacle. See, uh, the tabernacle faced the east. So when the high priest, you'd see a death, a burial, and a resurrection into the holy place. That's the sun rising in the east. And then, so it's a resurrection. And then... There's a mercy seat in the most holy place. That's him. That's why the earth, that's why the sun sets in the west. It's testifying that he can set into the hearts and minds of mankind. You understand? And that's really what happened when we come to this school. We didn't know these things about Yah Yahweh Elohim through his son, Yahshua Messiah. And by the preaching of the gospel, see, uh, that we were dead. So eternal life's to know. We didn't know we're dead. We're buried in it. Then he then he cast out those lies and deception or whatever darkness was in our heart and mind. And you can receive, and those demons, and you can receive, uh, you can be sealed with the Holy Spirit. Then that's him setting in your heart and mind. You see how the sun rises in the east and sets in the west is testifying how he can set in your heart and mind. Yeah. That's what it's testifying to. Uh, it might have been a little bit longer explanation what you're looking for, but <laughs> that's a big subject talking about the sun. Praise <laughs> you know God. It yeah. gives light to the whole world. Doesn't the sun banish the darkness on the airplane? See, when the sun's gone down, it, it, it's dark. But when he resurrects, the light. Uh, banishes the darkness to show you that the Holy Spirit can get rid of those lies and deception of those satanic spirits that have deceived you. Praise Yahshua Messiah. Hallelujah. 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 Yeah. 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 Okay. I'm going to pick up a train of thought. Now let me say this, see. Let me say this. Now as it was said here, Dr. Harris also said it. Excuse me, Dr. McCain, where are you reading? So I, can... I just put up a few verses, a few lines right there. Uh, what he just talked about. 
talking about the sun. Okay, let's see. Oh, that's the sun. Exactly. That why nobody can steal the sun out of the sky. Just a few lines from that. Okay. And he says here, now let me say this, see, let me say this. Now, as it was said here, Dr. Harris also said it. Yahweh said, you find it? Yes. To the law, to the law and to the testimony. If they speak, he said, not according to this word, it's because there's no light in them. Now, you ought to be wise enough, see, not to get up and speak against it because you're telling on yourself. You see what I mean? You're telling to everybody that knows something about it. You're telling on yourself. Now, somebody says, well, why go to the law and why go to the prophecy? Now, that's what Yahweh said. I didn't say it, see. And when you go to the law and to the prophecy, now you follow me. You pay attention to what I'm saying. Just like he told Moses to build this tabernacle, to put the blood, water, spirit, and this whole thing line up, uh, this whole thing line upon line, precept upon precept, see, line upon line. All the way through, see, seven steps in here in this tabernacle. Now, isn't that just telling you ever since you've been knowing me? Excuse me, I said that wrong. Now, I'm going to try to prove this to you. I've been telling you ever since you have known me. Since somebody said, you got to get up off of blood and water and spirit. Ever since you have been knowing me, for the most part, I told you that water baptism was invalid in this present age. Haven't I told you that? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So let's pause here because he mentioned something that's really important, and that's the steps and the pattern that I'm hoping someone will be willing to review with the class. Bring the chart up. Uh, let's see if there's another seven steps. Is Camilla Perry available? Okay, <laughs> Sister Lila Morris. Okay, Sister Meryl Sabala, are you available to review the seven steps in the pattern? You, you didn't give me a chance to respond before you said somebody else's name. Okay, who is speaking? This is- Kamala. Okay, would you like to go ahead and give us the seven steps in the pattern, please? Okay. Our textbook. First step, start at the gate. Can you tell me what page that is, please, on the textbook? Um, I actually haven't found it yet. Okay. Um, I'm uh, going to use the um, page 126. So one is the gate, which has, um, you enter into the gate and to the outer courtyard, which has um, the brazen laver for sin sacrifice, then the uh, brazen laver for water. So step two will be the to, brazen altar of sin sacrifice, yes? Yes. Uh, sorry. And the step, step three. three is um, 
the brazen laver with the water and, and the holy anointing oil is there at the door. Step four. Step five is the holy place with the um, seven branch candlestick, the table of shoe bread, 12 loaves go on that, and um, the altar of, sense, uh, altar of um, incense, the fifth, the, the sixth step is the second veil between the holy place and the most holy place. And then uh, seven is um, the most holy place with the Ark of the Covenant with the two cherubims overshadowing the mercy seat. Thank you, Sister Camilla. Appreciate that. That's the seven steps that was just discussed here in the transcript. So again, this is just an opportunity, especially on Tuesdays that I would like us to, to take advantage of in rehearsing the matter for ourselves and assisting what we can as a body so that we all are on the same page. Okay, so let me go back to the transcript. May I add something? Yes, please. I'm in uh, volume one, page 127. Okay. And in the court roundabout is the first plate and is represented in the migratory pa pattern by the door or entrance into the house of the Israelites on which the blood of the lamb was put on the lintel and two side posts and is compared to the gate or entrance into the tabernacle and was fulfilled by Yahshua when he said, enter in at the straight gate. And that's Exodus 12, 22, Exodus 40 and 8. Matthew 7 and 13. If the readers want to do go on uh, with explaining those seven steps, volume one, page 127, and start with the second plane. Oh, you go right ahead. You start with the first step, which is okay. the gate correlates to the entryway into the children of Israel's home. So continue, please. That's in the court roundabout. Also in the court roundabout is the second and it's represented in the migratory pattern by slaying and eating of the Paschal lamb that's showing that sacrifice and preparedness to leave out of Egypt and is compared to the sacrifice of sin offering on the altar and the vital court of the tabernacle and was fulfilled by the prepared body of Yahshua, the Passover lamb, slain for sins of the world. That's Exodus 12, 1 and 2, Exodus 20 and 24, and 1 Corinthians 5 and 7. The third plane is in the court roundabout, and it's represented in the migratory pattern by the baptism of the Israelites in the cloud and in the sea as they fled from the Egyptians and is compared to the brazen labor in the court of the tabernacle for washing and cleansing purposes and fulfilled by Yahshua by washing the disciples' feet. And then it's got a bunch of scriptures there. And the fourth plane is in the holy place and is represented in the migratory pattern by the par parting of the waters of the Red Sea, forming an entrance into the wilderness which we always say that the wilderness is like um, um, where the holy place is and is compared to the first veil or the door of the tabernacle and was fulfilled by Yahshua who said, I am the door. By me, if any man enter, enter he shall be saved. And the fifth plane, which is the holy place as well, is represented in a migratory pattern by the wilderness of Sinai, where Israel received the law and tabernacle with its ceremonies, with the presence of Elohim among them, 
and is compared to the sanctuary of the tabernacle with this furniture for ceremonial purposes, overlaid with gold and fulfilled by Yahshua, who said, I am the light of the world, the bread of life and intercessor. And then we got the sixth plane, which is the veil to the most holy place. It's represented in the migratory pattern by the parting of the River Jordan, forming the second veil between the wilderness of Sinai and Canaan's land. And it's compared to dividing the veil of blue, purple, and scarlet, which hung between the sanctuary and most... I'm sorry, it's my phone. It's re um, I'll start over the sixth plane, which is on the veil to the most holy place, the sixth oh, plane. Yeah, yeah it's fine. that's right. It is represented in the migratory pattern by the pardon of the River Jordan, forming the second veil between the wilderness of Sinai and Canaan's land and is compared to the dividing veil of blue, purple, and scarlet, which we know that's in our neck region, which hung between the sanctuary and most holy place in the tabernacle, and was fulfilled by Yahshua the Messiah when he took off the veil of his flesh and ascended into heaven. The seventh plane is represented, and this is in the most holy place, is represented in the migratory pattern by the Israelites entering Canaan land or the promised land, their final earthly inheritance, and is in, compared to the most holy place in the tabernacle, a type of heaven, and was fulfilled by Yahshua the Messiah, who entered into the holy places made with hands. But, but, not made with hands, correct? It says, Yahshua the Messiah, who entered not into the holy places made with hands, right. okay. but into heaven itself. Okay, and I think, that's, I think that's all I got on that, those seven steps. Praise Yahshua. Beautiful. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, let's um. Go. May, yeah. I, may I say something, please? Yes, please. Okay, this is Edna Nixon in Detroit. You know, bringing things up to date uh, on the news, they had a uh, flight that lost the door. And they're searching and searching. They say, where's the door? We can't find the door. And what Yahshua showed me is that it says over in... Um, John 10 and 9, where it says, I am the door. By me, if any man enter in, he shall be saved and shall go in and out and find pasture. The thief cometh not but, to, but for to steal and to kill and to destroy. I am come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. He said, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd giveth his life for the sheep, but he that is in hireling and not the shepherd, who's on the, who's on the sheep or not, seeth the wolf coming and leaveth the sheep and fleeth, and the wolf catcheth them and scattereth the sheep. The point I wanted to make is about that door. And I don't know, and I'm pretty sure I'm not the only one that has been seeing this on the news uh, about that well, flight. Alaska, I wanna... Yeah, the Alaskan airline. That's the one, exactly. And they asking, have anybody found the door? And that we know that the door, or as we know, as being Yahshua, but you got the world as searching, or like they have blinders on their eyes. They cannot find the door. And I just wanted to make that comment since it was on that uh, that uh, step down at, right there where you have uh, Yahshua. Uh, what is that, step four, before you get into the holy place. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, praise Yahshua. 
Anyone else would like to comment before we continue the second reading? We have a few minutes. All right, let's continue with the second reading. The last response was yes, sir. Okay. Haven't I told you, you might read that too in the ninth chapter of Hebrews. The water, see, is outdated. The blood of bulls, goats, and heifer is out. It never has been in in order to be out. Now, do you understand? But well, what this pointed to, see, was the blood of Yahshua the Messiah. That isn't out. And the water that run out of his side or out of his sanctuary here, see, that was the sacrificial lamb of Yahweh. That's not out. You may be, you may be, but that isn't. And it's never going to be out. It reaches all the way back to Adam and through all generations, you understand. Now, if you would take it, see, by the pattern, see, you got your blood, your water, see, and you got your spirit and the door, see, you follow? Now, I didn't say nothing about them things. Yahweh said it, see, you follow? I told you, I don't know how many times, and all of you have seen me debate it, that physical water baptism wouldn't do you no good whatsoever. It would not wash away sin. And you have read in the book, have you got it there? That the blood of bulls, it's the ninth chapter of Hebrews, I think it is. For if the blood of bulls and of goats and heifers and of and ashes of the heifer sprinkling the unclean sanctifies for the purifying of the flesh, how much more shall the blood of Yahshua, who through the eternal spirit? Now, just a minute, see. Now, he wasn't just a man as a lot of you might think of him, just the man hanging out there on the cross. It wasn't like that. No, uh-uh. It was through the eternal spirit that he offered himself to Yahweh without spot. Is that right? And Yahweh had to accept that because the eternal spirit that was incarnated in him that was Yahweh himself. You follow? How much more is he sanctified to the purifying of the flesh? But he didn't raise up at that time, never done nothing for you back there than up here now. What it did do was just simply pointed to him as being the sacrifice that Yahweh prepared. You want to stop there or keep going? Uh, you can. We have about, what, two minutes? Yeah. Okay. Listen, folks. Now, that makes me say this to you, see. That makes me say this. Them people over there that follow Muhammad, you see, Elijah Muhammad, see, he never died for nobody. And if he had, it was not acceptable. You see what I'm talking about? It would it would been the same as Moses had died, you see. It wouldn't been of any effect. John the Baptist was born with the Holy Spirit, and he did die. It never helped you a bit, see. That's the reason why I don't believe in running around arguing about Muhammad, you see, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, or Elijah back yonder, you understand? Or Moses or none of the rest of them, you understand? Yahweh had only one sacrifice, and all of the rest of them, sacrifices and burnt offerings, thou wouldest not, but a body hast thou prepared for me. Then said I, lo, 
I come in the volume of the book. It is written of me to do thy will, O Yahweh. Listen now, he taketh away the first. What's that for? That he might establish the second. Dr. Harris, would you mind reading that? Now look here, folks, see, you just, you can just read these things over and over and over again, just over and over till you get so you can repeat them, you understand, by memory, see, and still miss the boat. You see? All right, read. All right. Mm -hmm. Praise mm -hmm. Joshua. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we'll pause okay. here. And I'll yield the floor to the moderator. I want to thank everybody for attending. Thank Joshua for calling us to assemble and to learn more of this purpose plan, plan, plan that he's given to our Father, divine vision and revelation, a, a divine revelation that he's giving us, you know, each and every time we assemble here together. With that, I yield the floor to the moderator. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We'd like to thank everyone that came out to study with us today. We have classes Tuesday through Friday from 11 o'clock a.m. to 1 o'clock p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 8 o'clock a.m. to 10 a.m. Pacific Standard Time, 12 p.m. to 2 a.m. in Malaysia, and 4 p.m. to 6 p.m. in England. And we have a Jamaica class on Sundays at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. May we all stand in our hearts and minds and for the doxology taken from the last two verses of the book of Jude, Holy Name Version. Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless in the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. To the only wise Elohim, our Savior, through Yahshua the Messiah, our Sovereign, belong glory and majesty, dominion and power, both before all time and now and ever. Let us all say, Hallelujah. 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 H